Hey puppy. Welcome to Thriver TV, the place to break free from narcissistic abuse with quantum tools and understandings. And before I start the show, I'd just like to say it is an absolutely beautiful day in Melbourne. Beautiful, beautiful winter's day. And I want to share with you a little bit about my day because it's so important. I feel it is. Today's been awesome. Feeling great, got up, went for a run, sat and did some blog posts and some correspondence with people in my Three Keys Thriver group. Uh, met a gentleman here for evaluation on this property because I've just purchased another one that I'm going to be doing up as well. And then went and had a pedicure, came back doing this video now, and then I'm going to go for a drive in my new car with the roof down to go and see a beautiful girlfriend, Sharon, after I've done this. Now, there's a really good reason that I wanted to share with you how awesome all of that is. And it's only midday at this point. This is the start of my day. It's amazing. Is because I used to, as a result of narcissistic abuse, I used to be crippled on my couch. I was 37 kilos. I couldn't function. I was in constant trauma. I was getting through my life minute to minute, second to second with the agony inside me that was so bad, I didn't even know how I was going to exist or keep living. This is why I am so passionate about these videos and the work I do and all of the free resources I put out there is because I want my life to be everybody's life. I lost everything as a result of narcissistic abuse. And even in my second narcissistic abuse relationship, I lost decades of work again. So I want you to know, and I was 40 and then I was 48 years of age. So I really want you to know that when we follow specific processes to get the trauma out of our bodies, to really meet ourselves and self partner and up level, the results are incredible and they can be very, very fast. I'm only a few years on from my last narcissistic abuse experience, which broke down when I was 47, 48. I'm nearly 50 now. My life is amazing. And I know that your life truly can be as well. I really passionately know that. So today, what I want to do with Thriver TV, which is the place to break free from narcissistic abuse with quantum tools and understandings, is I want to talk about another one of our susceptibility to narcissistic abuse. And this one is big, and I will even go as um, profound with the understanding of this, to say that it really is an underpin for everybody that has experienced narcissistic abuse for any significant amount of time. So narcissistic abuse is huge. We all know it's very, very painful. And the underpin that I believe that can really hold us stuck in it and trapped in it is scarcity consciousness. This is a massive susceptibility and it's really common. It's universal, in fact, with people that have suffered narcissistic abuse. So when we're in scarcity consciousness, what it means is, is that we don't believe that life has got our back. We don't believe that there could be anything better than what we're experiencing. And we think that the thing or the person that we're experiencing has the ultimate potential of being what we need to have love, approval, survival or security. And we don't think that we can get it from anywhere else, that we have to make this thing or this person work in our life. And what scarcity consciousness is really about, it's about the undeveloped parts of ourselves that haven't yet recognized or understood or anchored into that we can be a generative source of our own experience. So this is very much about a product of our ego scarcity consciousness. It's a belief in the evidence of the past, which hasn't supplied us with what we wanted uh, and what was going to make us fulfilled. So therefore, the ego will tell us that it's not 
coming from any new experiences and our ego is also telling us that this is the gauge of our life and we actually don't have the power within us to develop and evolve ourselves beyond the previous painful trajectories that we were living in relation to certain aspects of our life, often starting from our childhood, because these are the parts of our lives that have been difficult or that we've lost out on or we thought we had these things working for us and then they sabotaged, they blew up and we went back to the pain, the emptiness and the disappointment over and over again on these patterns. So when we're in a scarcity consciousness, this isn't just about trying to put ice cream on top of poop. That really is um, self-avoidance when we're just trying to be positive on top of our traumas rather than dealing with our traumas. What this is about is we're trying to turn poop into ice cream. We're trying to say that this thing or this person that isn't working out uh, that is problematic or disappointing or even abusive, that it can, it can change, that we can fix or change something outside of us in order to change the state of our own life. So when we're in uh, scarcity consciousness, we don't let go. We don't self-partner. We don't address the limiting wounds in our body that are not allowing us to step into true deservedness or expansion and the parts of ourselves that are accepting poop, accepting the things that hurt us as okay and giving ourselves all the justifications and excuses as to why we're doing that. So in scarcity consciousness, we're fearful, we're anxious, we're getting diminished and we usually blame people and situations for not providing us with the levels of love and success and expansion and fulfillment that we're not taking the responsibility to generate for ourselves. So we're in victim consciousness when we're in scarcity consciousness and we have all sorts of stories. We have all sorts of stories such as all men um, are bad. All men are cheaters. There's no good jobs out there. There's no healthy relationships out there. There's, um, this isn't going to get any better than what it is. If I let go, there's no guarantees that I'm going to find anything or anyone better. You know, and men might be saying, you know, all women um, use me, all women hurt me, all women leave me. So this is scarcity consciousness where we put a blanket statement over the top of everything and everyone and we don't think that there's any better out there. So it's very much about the devil I know is better than the ones that I don't. And we're really sourcing life from the outside in. We're believing that our evidence of what we lived is the truth for us. It's the gauge of our life. And we're not understanding that we're emotional, vibration, vibrational, internal creators, then, a, then signaling life in response to our beliefs and our emotional compositions and how we turn up and what we will and won't receive. We're not realizing that those are the cogs that then turn the wheels of life in positive ways for us. So let me give you a couple of examples of scarcity consciousness and two people, uh, which exactly correlates with narcissistic abuse. So the first one is Amber and Amber is working for a narcissistic boss and he diminishes her authority with her staff constantly and he uh, emotionally attacks her in numerous ways constantly. And Amber is suffering from depression and anxiety and she's gone to a doctor and she's got antidepressants to help her cope. And Amber firmly believes that 
This job is so highly paid and it's close to home and it's convenient that it's worth hanging on to because she may uh, not get another job that's this lucrative. So she, she stays, she puts up with it and that's her experience. And the next example is George and George is in a relationship with uh, Michelle and Michelle is constantly working. Michelle has never introduced George to her family. Michelle won't commit to George. Uh, she's always unavailable. At the and she says the right things, but the actions don't meet the words at all. And George hangs in there. He believes that he hasn't met anybody like Michelle for years where there's that level of compatibility and common interests. And he's so incredibly attracted to her and he's hanging on. He refuses to let go. He plays it safe and is uh, incredibly supportive and gives her space. He even knows that she still sees an ex-boyfriend, which she's admitted that she's not over and she's trying to get closure with him so that she can move on. So what happens in um, scarcity consciousness is we live in potential we ignore the facts as they are. Our head gives us all sorts of excuses and lies and stories to hang in there. And we don't listen to the language of our soul, which is our emotions, which is our connection to the field and truth and infinite intelligence and the generation of a true and real life. We don't listen to any of that when our emotions are screaming wrong town. Now, in the case of uh, George and also of Amber, their bodies are screaming at them, their emotions are screaming at them. Amber is being diminished every day. She's um, in more and more, losing more and more pieces of herself, more and more self-confidence, uh, more and more self-respect. And she's lying to herself. She, the lies that she's telling herself is that if she just hangs in there and does a good job, one day her boss will recognize it and he'll stop uh, harassing and bullying her, or he might move on from the job one day. And she also, part of her justifications to herself is, well, I'm on antidepressants now, so obviously that is buffering me from the abuse. It's stopping me getting as hurt. And George is lying to himself constantly. He just, the lies he tells himself are, if I just hang in there and I'm just really supportive and I don't put pressure on her, she's gonna heal away from her ex-boyfriend and she's gonna come into my arms and into my heart and be my partner. So, and the reality is life and the quantum level of life has a very, very absolute and powerful system. And that system is, is wherever we are having a relationship with ourselves is the relationship that we're gonna generate with life. So both of these people in scarcity consciousness are selling themselves out, selling themselves short, allowing themselves to be abused they're ignoring their inner beings and their emotions, which is self-abuse. Uh, and a lot of us did it. We didn't realize we were doing it because we were taught to make excuses and live in potential. So they're treating themselves in ways that life can only show up and give them more of the same. So the boss is not going to morph into a great guy. He can't in Amber's quantum reality. That's just not going to happen. And with George, he's not going to have Michelle all of a sudden commit to him and show up as his perfect partner because he is not a perfect partner to himself in any shape or form. So in scarcity consciousness, 
We tend to believe in st statistics, our past probabilities, and it's got nothing to do with that. There, the reality of Amber and George has got nothing to do with uh, statistics, their past probabilities, um, uh, partner and job potential markets at the time. It has nothing to do with any of that. What it has got to do with is their own inner identities, their own emotional compositions, where their inner beliefs are aligned to, where their levels of deservedness are, how much they're going to take a stand for their truth and, and become a generative source of their own truth. That is what creates our realities. And until we do that, we live in these diminished, lesser than uh, levels of yourself where we think we're playing it safe. Scarcity consciousness is about living in uncomfortable comfort zones. So I'll hang on to this and try and make it work because I don't want to take any new risks. And when we're doing that, our comfort zones get more and more uncomfortable because life, our soul and our emotions in collusion with each other have got a very specific agenda to steer us into our highest and our best self. And it's our emotional gauge that is telling us whether we're on track or we're off track. Pema Chodron had a beautiful saying which went something like this, that Life will not let up what it's doing to us until we learn what we need to learn. And um, Matt Kahn says something very profound too. He says that life is going to evict us out of something that's not a sole truth for us. So what happens is life raises the ante, the pain gets more intense, the the drama and the trauma gets more intense because life is saying, wrong town, you are not living out a situation or a relationship that is serving your highest and truest self. You're hanging on to it for the wrong reasons. You haven't yet realized your expansion, your freedom, your ability to be a creator in this game, instead of just thinking that you are subservient to what life dishes up to you. You're not. We're all powerful creators. So in these, both in these situations, you know, for, um, for Amber, regardless of the medication she's taking, her emotions are getting more and more traumatized. And for George, no matter the lies he's telling himself, he's becoming more and more emasculated, more and more diminished, losing more and more self-worth and becoming more depressed and anxious. We know when we're off track, when we're depressed and anxious. So, you know, why do we do this to ourselves? Why do we do it? The reason why we do this, and I know I did it, I did it awfully in narcissistic abuse. I was so in scarcity consciousness. I was terrified about surviving myself. I was terrified about generating a life of love, approval, security, and survival for myself. I had massive abandonment fears. And the reason was, is because I was a wounded child in an adult body, showing up as a child, trying to get a parent to take care of me, to take all of my fears and my insecurities and my traumas away for me. And of course that didn't happen. All I received was more evidence of the traumas that I was self-avoiding that I wasn't healing and up-leveling for myself. So when I did that, this is the life I live now, that, it, that is just total freedom and joy. You know, I'm out to dinner tonight. I'm, I'm doing a wonderful webinar with thousands of people from all over the world tomorrow. Friday, I've got an interview with Hay House Radio. I'm living the life of my dreams. And that wasn't by chance. That wasn't just by luck. That was from purposeful design of doing the work in my body on my traumatized young inner unresolved parts so that I could release them and create the space to anchor in being an empowered, unlimited, 
at all with space and joy and inspiration and freedom in my cells, which is all of us. All of us, it's our organic state without our traumas. So this is how we evolve this stuff. This is how we get out of scarcity consciousness into being unlimited. And those of you that are up leveling your wounds, that are working the NARP program, that are working quantum freedom healing, that come into the webinar groups with me, you know what I'm talking about. You know, and this is something you have to exponentially experience. This is not something you can think and feel and know. This is something you need to do and become in order to know. And when you do, you know what I'm talking about because you start living it, you start feeling it, you start becoming it. That's what I want for everybody. So let's have a look at the up-level versions of Amber and George. This is how it went. And I work with these people every day. So this is just a really common experiences. So Amber went inside to actually self-partner meet and confront this pattern in her life where she was okay and hanging in there to be abused while abusing herself. So when she self-partnered and she went inside, what she found out was there was a two-year-old part of her terrified of authority, terrified about asserting, putting her best foot forward because of the fear of annihilation. This is what this was all about. So Amber up leveled those parts. She was able to release them and adult in her, her anchor in her adult true self. And she was able to show up with her boss, no longer as a traumatized two year old, but as an adult woman, very clear, very calm, very direct, not attached to outcomes, just being the cause, the mission of honoring herself without fear. And when she showed up to him, she stated that she would no longer accept these certain conditions from him. And if they continued, she would start looking for another job. Now, what happened is Amber's boss backed off. He picked easier targets to start abusing and left her alone. So then Amber, even from there, expanded even further. She started to realize that in this new, empowered adult sense of herself, she wanted even more than she was experiencing in this company. She started looking for even more prestigious jobs and vocations. And that was exactly where she ended up going. Now, George, George, when he realized that this part of him that was accepting not to be committed to, not to be loved healthily was okay. He realized that that was actually really malfunctioning and not healthy. He confronted his inner being. And when he went inside, he found out in his subconscious programming that he had a mother that was never available. She was always busy with her career. She was busy with other people. She had much more time for everybody else than George. She was never emotionally available for him. And when he up-leveled those four-year-old wounds, what happened is he organically came into a deservedness of love for himself, which meant that he needed to be matched with it from the outside. He firmly realized that the reason that he'd picked Michelle is he was repeating his childhood wounds so that this time he would have the ability to evolve beyond it and to get onto a trajectory of something so much healthier and loving for himself rather than repeating his childhood. So he showed up with Michelle. He told her the truth about what he wanted, what he needed, what he would and wouldn't accept. Michelle still gave him the dance, still gave him the runaround, and he was very clear, very able to let her go and know that this wasn't a match for his deservedness and for his adult healthy love needs. He then, not long after that, within three months, met a woman who firmly committed to him, a woman that he was even more attracted to than what he was with Michelle. So these are our truths that we need to look at. And we need to understand that 
what we're generating in our experience has got nothing to do with the outside. It's got everything to do with the inside. And up leveling ourselves beyond scarcity consciousness and our young wounds and the reasons why we're clinging on to things that are not serving us, the things that we're trying to turn from poop into ice cream, but they're poop, we need to let go and do the work on ourselves. We can understand there is a way out of this. There's a very powerful, very direct, succinct way out of this when we go in and we find our power within. So I really hope that this has helped you. And please know that I would love you to join me in one of my webinar groups. We do intense workshopping on all of this stuff and people start changing their inner identity very, very quickly. Within days, you start reprogramming, sometimes hours. And I'd love to show you how to do that by joining me. So that's it from me until next week. So as always, keep smiling and keep healing and keep thriving because there's nothing else to do. Lots of love. Bye-bye.